Tesla has been expanding its presence in the EV charging industry lately, and it goes beyond just the North American charging standard. For anyone not familiar with the North American charging standard, the name is pretty self-explanatory. It's a new standard connector design in North America for electric vehicle charging. It's based on Tesla's connector design, which Tesla used to keep proprietary. Only Tesla's vehicles and chargers had this connector. But at the end of 2022, Tesla offered to release its connector design for other automakers and charging networks to use as a new standard in North America. Not much happened immediately following the announcement, but eventually in May of 2023, Ford suddenly announced it was going to be adopting Tesla's connector design and offering an adapter for existing Ford electric vehicle customers. A couple weeks later, General Motors announced they would be adopting the connector design, and since then, more and more automakers have gotten on board with Tesla's North American charging standard, with most of the automotive industry now committed to using the next connector on their next generation vehicles. So at this point, it seems like the whole industry, at least in North America, is shifting over to this one North American charging standard design, and that's capable of doing both AC and DC fast charging, by the way. So it's effectively replacing the older standards of CCS1 and Chatamo for DC fast charging and J1772 for AC charging. But Tesla's involvement goes beyond just opening up their connector design. They're also adding new features and adjusting the business model for their existing product lineup. For example, Tesla is currently in the process of implementing payment capabilities for its destination charging network. The rollout of payment capabilities for this network began in 2020 with Tesla releasing their Generation 3 wall connector. Tesla sells a NACS-only version of this charger for $475, but they also have a universal charger that includes an adapter for the J1772 connector, and that's priced at $595. And Tesla sells the same piece of hardware for both home charging and for public charging purposes. If a business like a hotel or restaurant wanted to own some of Tesla's wall connectors and wanted them listed on Tesla's charging network, they're going to have to qualify with Tesla's requirements. This includes having regular business hours, the ability to sell some kind of goods or services, and having full-time employees on site during those hours. And for the business to set pricing and collect payments for the electricity used, Tesla also requires them to have at least six units at their charging location. But as of recording this video, Tesla's website still says the payment capabilities for these chargers is coming soon, so we'll see when this feature actually gets implemented for the network. But once it does, I think Tesla's wall connector will be a lot more valuable for any property owners, because right now, those property owners need to pay the expenses of drivers consuming electricity on their property, but once there's payment capabilities, that's going to be turned around and those property owners can have an opportunity of generating revenue from those drivers instead. And for DC fast charging, Tesla is currently rolling out their version 4 superchargers. For the time being, these version 4 superchargers are capped at a max charge rate of 250 kilowatts, which is pretty much the max rate any 400 volt vehicle architecture can handle, which is what's most common these days. But with more 800 volt architecture vehicles coming on the road, Tesla has confirmed these version 4 superchargers will eventually get speeds up to 350 kilowatts. Another benefit of version 4 superchargers is that the cable length is 10 feet long instead of only 6.5 feet for previous generations. And this is a big deal not only for Tesla's Cybertruck, which the, the 6.5 foot cable can barely reach the charge port on that, but also for other non-Tesla EVs, which have different locations for the charge port. Sometimes it's, you know, on the side of the vehicle where it's, you know, much harder to reach with that six and a half foot cable on a lot of the existing superchargers. So having this 10 foot cable is just a huge benefit and makes it a whole lot easier for all, all different types of EVs to use Tesla's superchargers. But aside from these new features, Tesla is also selling this supercharging hardware to other companies to own and operate themselves. So far, two deals have been announced, one with BP and one with the EG Group, both of these companies being large fuel providers. Tesla is selling these companies the same hardware they're using for their version 4 superchargers. The difference is that they'll be fully branded, owned, and operated by BP and the EG Group. I find this really interesting because Tesla has really never sold any of its DC fast charging hardware to any other companies. They've generally just owned and operated it all themselves under their supercharging network. And with all of these things combined, 
the North American Charging Standard, version 4 superchargers, DC fast charging hardware sales, and payment capabilities for the wall connector, you really start to see Tesla moving past the, you know, the, the Tesla bubble and really expanding into the broader EV charging industry. This non-Tesla portion of the charging industry is currently dominated by companies like Electrify America, EVgo, ChargePoint, and many more. But the financial situation for a lot of these companies is not the best right now, with a lot of them still being unprofitable and high interest rates making it a lot harder to raise additional funding. For example, ChargePoint reported a $158 million net loss in the third quarter this year, while at the same time reported $367 million of cash on their balance sheet. EVgo reported a $28 million net loss in the same quarter, with $229 million of cash on their balance sheet, but they also spent $14 million building out new property equipment and software, which includes the chargers they own themselves. But Tesla is a huge company and their charging business is a relatively small part of it, so it doesn't have its own category on their financial statements. But either way, Tesla still has $16 billion of cash on their balance sheet and another $10 billion in short-term investments. And of course, this gets spread around their other lines of businesses. It's not all for their charging business. But the point I'm trying to make is that Tesla isn't as financially constrained as some of these other EV charging businesses out there. So I think it'll be really interesting to see how things play out in the charging industry over the next few years. I've got lots of other videos on EV charging, so be sure to check those out. I'll see all of you over there, and thank you guys for watching.